Well, folks, it's insanity over here. There's construction outside. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but I just said, it's okay. Make the video tone. It doesn't matter. You know, this could have given me anxiety. You know, I'm trying to make a video. There's construction noises. But I just said, nah, I'm not going to let that bother me. So you're going to hear a lot of random noises. They got, they got the radio playing outside. You're going to hear drilling. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. Why? Because this video is on anxiety. And now you're probably thinking, Tony, why are you making videos on anxiety? What do you think you are? Like a pharmacist? Um, well, here's the thing. I got a request to make a video on anxiety. And when you get a request, you make the goddamn video, right? Now, anxiety is an interesting thing to talk about, you know? Because it's really just a head game we're playing with each other, right? It's very detailed, so I had to write down some notes because there's no way I'm going to remember all of this. Now, of course, when you talk about anxiety, the, the classic thing people have always told us, you know, it's like, you know, let's say you're, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're, uh, anxiety is something typical like public speaking. And they always say, you know, like, uh, you know, if you're like in on stage and you're about to talk or you're playing a song or something, like tell yourself, well, come on, what's the worst that can happen? Right? That's what people say. Just go out there and do it. What's the worst that can happen? Well, that's actually a horrible advice. Really bad advice. What's the worst that can happen? You can get killed. Someone can shoot you. Someone can stand up in the crowd and shoot you. That's what could happen, you know? You get, what's the worst that can happen? I don't know. You can get made fun of. You can get beat up. You can get robbed. A lot of bad things can happen. You can get killed. So then you're thinking, Tony, why are you being a bummer? Well, see, that's not the trick. The trick is not to tell yourself what's the worst that can happen. The trick is to tell, is to get to a place where you accept any bad scenario happening, right? That's the trick to minimize anxiety. You don't go up there and say, what's the worst that can happen? You go up there knowing fu fully, just you got to be fully aware that anything could happen, right? That's the thing. It's like going outside. Uh, it's like people say, oh, when you go outside, like, and you're walking down the street, have a positive attitude. You know, like, it's going to be a great day. It could be a great day, but you can also get robbed and killed. Remember that. Now, that sounds pessimistic, but that's reality, right? That's the thing. Anything can happen. When you walk out there on the street, realize that anything can happen. And accept the fact that anything can happen. That's how you truly get rid of anxiety. It's not living in some world of delusion where you think that you're so precious and special that nothing bad could happen to you. Oh, I walk outside and since I'm glooming positivity, I'm just precious and invincible. No. You can walk outside and some, somebody could just be like, you know what? I don't like you and take your head and smash it against the sidewalk. They can do that. But that's the thing. You got to be brave enough to understand that anything could happen when you walk outside. Something amazing could happen, something beautiful, something inspirational. Also, something really fucked up could happen. That's reality. That's not living complete delusion, right? Um, this fake positivity we spread around is a form of delusion. Reality is not good or bad. It's a mixture of everything. That's the only actual reality. Okay, reality is not you walk outside and, every, and everyone sprinkles roses on you. And reality is not that you're going to walk outside and everyone's going to beat you up and kill you. It's somewhere in the middle. And the whole mystery is you don't know which one's going to happen. That's why life's mysterious. You don't know which one's going to happen. But you have to be realistic enough to understand that any scenario can happen. And then you understand that, accept it, and you go outside and live your life. Right? That's the first step to help with anxiety. I'm not going to say who it is, but they might be watching. I'm going to say there's somebody I know who has a paranoia. When they walk on the street, they always look behind them because they think, what if somebody's going to stab me? Now, you probably think that sounds silly. I know somebody very well who has that, who has that paranoia. These things are very common. 
And like I said, you have to get to a place where like, no, I'm just going to keep walking down the street. I'm not going to look backwards every two minutes thinking that somebody, what if somebody jumps behind me and wants to stab me? Just accept the idea that that is a possibility, but you can't be looking back your whole life every two seconds to see if someone's going to stab you. You got to just accept that when I'm walking on the street, anything could happen and you just keep moving forward right you got to just keep moving forward you can't be looking behind you every two seconds um that's the first major step uh to really helping with anxiety you know so what else do i have written here because i wrote down quite a few notes okay so now what i wrote down here is also the idea of um you know different things that cause anxiety you know so it's kind of like what's causing anxiety if it's not something that i just talked about well these are typical things that cause anxiety uh people uh get anxious over the idea of like thinking they're not good enough or they're not successful enough they don't you know they haven't achieved enough uh well i'm here to tell you don't worry about that because that's a never-ending game you're never going never gonna to be satisfied with. That's the classic game of chasing the carrot in front of you. You never actually reach the carrot. And you probably think, why not, Tony? You become successful and you're awesome. That's not how it works. Success is completely an illusion. I'll, let me explain to you. So I like making YouTube videos. People, people uh, love making YouTube videos. And everybody who has a channel, they always dream about this idea of like, ah, one day I'll get a million subscribers. And they think that that's it. Well, you know what happens? They get a million subscribers and you think now they're going to be happy. Nope. Once they get to a million subscribers, they're terrified of losing those million subscribers. So what they do is like they pressure themselves and they give themselves anxiety and almost work themselves to death to upload non-stop because they're afraid that now since they finally have success what happens if they go below a million again right that's the thing because th when they have no subscribers they feel like a piece of shit and they get to a million and now they feel awesome and then they have to maintain that because if they drop back down they're going to feel like a piece of shit again so it's this never ending game of like i need to validate myself with my subscribers you know and the second you don't have those subscribers you're a piece of shit again so the trick is to understand that you're not a piece of shit when you have zero subscribers and when you have a million you're no different you're no more awesome you're just a fucking person living your life whether you have two subscribers or a million you have to still take a shit you still have to wipe your ass you still smell you still do everything you're just a person nothing really changes people might look at you differently that's the thing uh because we get our self-worth by how other people look at us. So if people look at us like, wow, you're awesome now. You start believing you're awesome. The idea is start believing you're awesome even before you have a million subscribers. And understand that it makes no difference. Right? Because if, if you get your worth on your amount of subscribers, then you're going to play that game forever. Because like I said, you feel like a piece of shit when you have little subscribers. Then you get a million subscribers. Now you feel awesome. And the rest of your life, you'll just feel stressed trying to hold on to those million subscribers because if you start dipping down again you're going to start feeling like a piece of shit so it's a never-ending game of nonsense so there you go success doesn't really give you anything uh so let go of anxiety to do with that because that's just a never-ending game of nothingness the idea is finding self-worth in yourself before you have that uh quote-unquote success because you're the same person you're going to be the same person either way uh Okay, so success, another one that people really uh, have a anxiety over is like uh, their sex life. You know, like, I guess for people, the uh, you know, they say that like a lot of relationships break up because the, the sex is not good anymore. I guess we're sexual creatures and sex is very important to human beings and if their sex life is not good, that usually kills a relationship. Probably the two biggest things that probably kills a relationship is like lack of communication and probably like, uh, bad sex, I guess. Their sex life is not good. You know, that's usually a lot of times, uh, you know, maybe their their sex life is not good and then uh, they get cheated on, you know. Uh, but here's a few tips to alleviate anxiety with sexual stuff. Uh, let's see. So what, what are big sexual problems? Um, let's say 
you're a premature ejaculator. Now, that might sound funny because you're like, not me, man. Not me, bro. I go all day, bro. Right? But a lot of guys struggle with that. So let's say, uh, let's say, uh, you know, you can only last a minute, right? Funny enough, I've heard that like the average is like three minutes or something. So you're not that below average. So, so just hang in there. But let's say you only last a minute and you're, you have anxiety if you're about to have sex with a girl because you're like, oh my God, it's going to be so embarrassing. I, I, I only last a minute and then boop, it's done. That sound boop, you know what that was. Clean it up afterwards or well, it depends where it goes. But so let's say you could only last a minute. It, all you got to do is mind fuck the person you're with a bit. You're your partner. You know, right about right before you're about to have sex, you look at them in the eyes and you just say, sweetheart, I'm about to give you the best 30 seconds of your life. And now uh, they're going to be like, oh, wow, great. Mm, that's great. I'm going to have, wow, the best 30 seconds of my life. They're not going to be too impressed. But you go for it and you're fully penetrating your partner. Male or female, it doesn't matter. It's 2019. Uh, and you're fully penetrating them. And then what happens is that you hit the 30-second mark and they're like rolling their eyes thinking, well, this is it. But the whole mind fuck is they don't know that you can actually last a full minute. So you give them a full minute of that penetration and their minds are going to be blown because you told them that they're going to have the best 30 seconds of their life. Meanwhile, you just gave them a full minute. You doubled the time. Now, anytime you double anything, people get really excited. Like a two-for-one pizza, you doubled. You get two pizzas for one. Anything that's two-for-one is a huge turn-on for people, and they get excited. So that's all it is. That's simple. You always downplay yourself. It's the same thing with cocks. Guys get really insecure with their cock size. You're, what you do is before you whip it out, you tell the girl, listen, uh, just to tell you, I hope you're not expecting some porno penis. Uh, mine is average, right? And then you whip it out, and then her mind is going to be blown because it's actually not average. You downplayed yourself. Your cock is actually, your, your cock is exactly slightly above average, right? That's the thing. You told her it was average, but it's actually slightly above average. So she's going to be like, holy shit. To her, it's going to seem like it's 12 inches because you mind fucked her. You always downplay everything. Now, I don't recommend this because this is a bit intense. But if you really want to fuck with her head, tell her it's slightly below average. And then when you whip it out and it's slightly above average, she'll be like, we have to be boyfriend or girlfriend now, instantly. It's going to completely bring her, I don't know, I, I, guess that's, I actually don't recommend that. It's actually too intense. You know, that's actually a little too much. So just settle down with that because you don't want to just, you know, she might climax too soon. That's a little too much. But these are like serious notes. They might seem a little, ah, uh, yeah, you're having fun. No, these are serious notes. That's what you do. You always downplay yourself. You just go, ah, I'm average, and then you whip it out, and it's slightly above average. That's how you do it. You know, oh, I'm going to give you the best 30 seconds of your life. Meanwhile, you give her a full minute. She's going to be pleasantly surprised. That's the whole trick to all of this, you know? That's the whole trick. What else do I have here? Because these are pretty useful. You know, very, very, very useful. What else do I got here? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Well, this one, this one is a bit, okay. Wow, this one is a bit intense. Oh, wow, I really wrote this one down. Oh, wow. I don't know how well this one works. Whoo-wee. This, this, this one's really long-winded. I'm going to try to get through this. I don't know if I can. I wrote this down. I just read it. It's really long-winded. But uh, let me get through it a bit and see if maybe something comes out of it. So maybe your anxiety comes from 
like social media, you know, it's tough these days. You know, you got an Instagram account, you post your new picture and no one likes it. No one pays attention to it and it makes you feel like shit, right? I mean, I wouldn't know because I don't have Instagram. I mean, I don't really have anything. I just, I don't really have much of anything. But most people do, like normal people, right? See, I'm not normal, but I, I'm fine with that, you know? I just, you know, got to do what you got to do. But for most normal civilized human beings, they have some sort of social media accounts. You got your Instagram, you got this, you got that. And it feels like shit when you don't get likes and attention. I had this scheme where you can try this out to get some attention. Keep in mind, it's long-winded. I don't know how this is going to play out, but let's just try to read through it and see if we can get anything useful out of this. Uh, okay, so the idea that I had is you got an Instagram account, you're not getting much love, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what you do is, again, you use this downplaying strategy for a while just to mind fuck people so what you do is you let yourself go you start wearing the same shirt every day you're eating cheetos and potato chips you gain a lot of weight ah uh, you just things are not going good for you right uh most of the pictures you post of yourself it's just you playing video games you've gained a lot of weight you got like you got one of those helicopter joysticks and you're playing all the helicopter simulations and stuff you know you got one of those nerdy headsets the gaming headsets and you got your nerdy gaming chair and you're just sitting there kick, 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 playing your games so those are all your pictures and everyone's going to be horrified obviously right and then what you do after you give them that for a couple of months is you disappear from Instagram for a while. You join a gym. You get super lean and sexy, muscular. You uh, get rid of your fucking nerdy gaming chair and your headset and all that shit. You sell it all and you use that money to buy a nice watch of some sort, a nice, decent, respectable watch, because apparently women love watches and nice shoes, you know? Uh, just don't worry about the shoes. One, one item at a time. Go to the gym, get yourself nice and lean and muscular, buy a watch, and then you start to slowly penetrate Instagram again with your new physique and your watch, and uh, see what happens. Because people are going to be pleasantly surprised because what happened was like you're a hero now because you let yourself go. People saw the way you looked. People love those Instagram uh, feeds, the ones that show people's progress when they're doing, you know, when they're losing weight or they're going to the gym. They go into ecstasy, right? Because they see someone else who's lost weight and they went to the gym and they think, well, maybe that could be me, you know? So that's a good way to sort of psychologically break people. Let yourself go, post embarrassing pictures of yourself, disappear for a couple of months, however long it takes for you to get back in shape again. And then you got your nice watch because you sold all your nerdy gaming chairs and stuff. Um, you know, I also wrote here, maybe you can get yourself a nice new haircut, you know, uh, that always helps, uh, I guess. Uh, what else do I have here? Yeah, just, it's a, it's a very basic strategy, but it'll work. Right? It will work. Let yourself go, become hideous, and then disappear, come back looking great with your watch. You've sold all your helicopter joysticks. No more multicolored uh, gaming chairs. Get yourself a regular black leather chair. No more orange chairs and red chairs. A regular chair, not a gaming chair. And for sure, no no headsets, you know, put on a bit like a earbuds or something. No girl has ever been turned on by a dude with a big fucking headset on. It's never sexy. All right. Jesus Christ. Sell all your gaming accessories, your joysticks, your steering wheels, burn them. It's the best advice I can give to cure your anxiety. What else do I have here? All right. Well, this one, again, this one's a bit, geez, Louise. 
Okay, well, another one is, uh, this one's really, like, controversial. I don't know. Oh, I don't even have to suggest this, but... Well, I wrote down that, like, let's say your anxiety anxiety comes from, like, you have a girlfriend and you're afraid that maybe she's cheating on you. And I said what you should do is beat her to her own game and cheat on her first. But that sounds horrible. I don't even recommend that. That just sounds, like, really messed up. But I wrote down here, beat her, beat her at her own game and cheat on her first. And then when she, when she confronts you on it, you just say, what the hell did you expect? You know, I sold my gaming chair, my consoles. I have this sick watch now. This is my life now. This is what I do. She'll understand. She'll understand, I guess. It's just rough. Guys, be honest with each other. Don't cheat on each other. Guys, girls, whatever is going on, you know, be honest with each other. And if you like to bang other people, have an open relationship and be honest about it. That's all it is. Honesty is the best policy. Always. So, oh, speaking of anxiety, be honest. When you're honest, you have less anxiety because you have nothing to hide. Huge tip. Huge, huge, huge tip. Um, Stip? No, it's a tip, not a stip. What else do I have here? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. I have one here called, I have one here that I named, like, what if school's giving you anxiety? Because a lot of people are in, whether it's high school, university, or whatever kind of level of schooling they're doing, it's tough, you know? School is tough. A lot of work, you know? And um, and, uh, my advice for you is... I know it's tough. School can be hard. University, whatever you're doing, you chose a really difficult degree to get. My tip to you is it, just tough it out because because um, if you don't tough it out and you don't get a good if you don't get a good education, right? What's gonna happen is that years later, you might be a guy uh, making YouTube videos with 90 subscribers. Uh, you know, so you don't want to be that guy. So I would say stay in school, get an amazing degree, uh, you know, a degree that's not going to be obsolete in five years. Uh, and then, but apparently I've heard that 90% of jobs will be obsolete in 20 years anyways. But good luck, I guess. Try to get a nice degree. Because like I said, if you don't, you might end up being a guy later on in life making pointless YouTube videos and you have 90 subscribers. That's no way to go. So stay in school, get a degree. I know it's hard, but you just got to tough it out. Uh, Let's see. Right, okay. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, and that last tip I gave is maybe you have social anxiety. Um, other people give you social anxiety, you know? Just talking to people in general. Definitely people can feel awkward about that. But just what I do, wrote I, I wrote down here, just remember, people are just other people. Right? People are just other people. So... So when you see people, they're basically just another you, right? That's all it is. People are just other people. Uh, so the idea is, it's very simple. Talk to them the way you'd want someone to talk to you. You know what I mean? So the idea is, you want to lift people up. You know, make them feel good about themselves, right? That's all it is. And eventually, they'll probably do the same to you, right? Right? And if you notice that they're, it's not that way and it's not equal, you're nice and you're lifting them up, but they're kind of bringing you down, that just a way to, that just means you can do better. You know what I mean? Look for something else. That's all it is. Never settle. The trick is to never settle. Because there's always going to be a great group of people out there. That's all it is. But the trick is, in order for you to attract that great group, group of people you got to feel good about yourself you got to that's the thing it's all about like how you feel about yourself because when you remember that you're the best and you feel good about yourself then that's when you attract amazing people so that's it so the idea is 
to never stop being the best version of yourself that you can be. Now, that sounds really cheesy, but it's true. When you feel good about yourself, that's when you attract great people in your life. That's how it works, you know? So that's it. That Those are my tips for anxiety. I know it was long-winded and a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, some stuff I don't even recommend. Like, yeah, some of the stuff was a little intense. I don't necessarily recommend it. But it was just, you know, to get the conversation going. And that's it. Hopefully that helps. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.